Mary McAleese, this is a massive day. The pathway to integration, you've set a target for 2027. Is that a hard target? No, I don't think it's a hard target. We believe that it's very achievable. Um, we knew that we couldn't do it overnight. This is not the kind of thing you just wave a magic wand, that it would be step by step by step. So we have, uh, if you like, our program, it's a programmatic and step by step approach to achieving um, one clubs, as many as possible, one county boards, um, dealing with all the issues uh, in a sequential way that, and, and, and very often working in parallel parallel groups dealing with things like um, fixtures, dealing with things like the integration of the staffing from the two organisations that will be melding into the GAA, Ladies Gaelic Football and Camogie. They'll be bringing their games and their staff and their profile and their energy into the GAA. So look, there's a lot of things will be happening over the three years, but we believe it's a realistic uh, prospect that by 2027, we'll have one association for all Gaelic games and that everybody who plays, whatever code it is, doesn't matter what code it is, you know, from handball, rounders, Gaelic football, ladies Gaelic football, camogie, they'll all be members of the GAA. You're 18 months now into this role. Yes. Has your role finished now, or are you going to continue in, in so what you're doing? The group, um, the strategic, um, uh, the committee that was given the job of steering um, uh, towards a strategy for integration, that group will continue. We will need to have that group because we're like a hub with a, um, a quite a big number of working groups now of experts um, feeding into us across all the issues that we've identified that we will need to progress going forward in the next three years. So, no, that group will stay in place. And of course, we'd be saying to people who are in clubs at the moment who are saying, well, how can we become a one club? Or county boards are saying, how can we become a one county board? We'll be saying, don't worry, you're not on your own. We have help. Uh, we will have um, assistance available. We'll have um, uh, expert groups available and expertise to help guide over the next three years. So no, no this group it will be needed for the next while. It is a massive undertaking bringing all of this under the one umbrella it is. for 2027. Like, w w when is this starting? Like, wh what's happening? Now, today, we're inviting everybody who has an interest in this. We're inviting our over 800,000 members across the three codes and everybody who works at club level, everybody who works at county board level. We're saying now, take a look at your situation, see what we are, see what our plan is, and ask yourself, what do I need to do to get behind? behind this, what are my local circumstances, what are the bits and pieces that we need to change, put together, what's our own time scale, let's get doing it. So it starts now. Um, in terms of the hurdles that have to be jumped, like what, what is the key one for you to get on top of it? The key one I think really is to get people behind it, you know. Um, the, all the orga it's a volunteer organisation, so right across the, um, the country and indeed outside of Ireland, uh, at club level, we have at the moment we've got a, a relatively modest number of one clubs and we want to drive towards one clubs becoming normative. So, yeah, so we're asking everybody who's involved in clubs, you know, and they're busy people who are already doing a hundred other things we're saying to them we're asking you to just take a little bit of space and time to ask yourself about your own club how do you get to be a one club and who do you what help do you need where can you get it from what's your time frame and what do you need to do same at county board level uh, and I say we respect the fact that these are volunteers um, these are people who are living other busy lives of jobs of kids of other things to be doing but we want them now to carve out the time to make integration happen. Have you had to get this on paper that we're going to have one county board instead of three, we're going to have one club instead of three, and we're going to have one president instead of three, so that's on paper? Yeah, that's all on paper. One county board, one club, that's our, our one club will be the basis, because at the end of the day we are a club, you know, we're club, it's clubs that drive um, the this, this sporting codes. Uh, yes, and our ambition will be ultimately one congress, uh, one president, um, so we're, we'll be bringing the, the two women's sports will come in, the, uh, over time the Ladies Gaelic Football Association and the Camogie Association, will, will, they will be melded into the GAA, all their staff will come into the GAA, every single person, there'll be no job losses in fact, um, here they'll have an opportunity to be part of a much bigger organisation, you can imagine the promotion prospect but you can imagine the impact prospects they'll have to actually take their experience to serve all Gaelic games. I think it's going to be a great injection of energy. Yeah, you're, you're so positive about this and it's fantastic to have you leading the way.
three years it's a massive it's a massive change and three years is quite quick are you worried about the next couple of years not in the least i think it's going to be so exciting more importantly is what people want we we know we 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 look first of all we were asked to do this by all the congresses we sat down and we started it. Then we brought in all the different constituencies to tell us how they thought we should do it. What were the issues going to be? What were the, you know, what were, how did they see us move, moving towards integration? And they told us. And then we did the survey. And the survey for me was such a vindication across all the codes. Didn't matter what age group. Didn't matter what code. Everybody's saying, please give us integration. It's what we want. It's the future. It's what we need. So no, I'm not worried. Uh, they, I, I'm not in the least bit worried. I'm very excited about the prospect. And, but, of course, the challenge is now to say to all those people who helped us so far, get behind it now and let's get, let's get this job complete. Because the irony is most people, most people are, you know, it comes as a surprise to them to know that we don't have an integrated association, you know. Just with regards to the women's sports side of things, what will this mean for equality, do you think? Because in recent years, obviously, there have been such strides towards it, but this will be a whole new, different ballgame. It's a whole new ball game. It's the opportunity for one of the fastest developing areas of sporting excellence in Ireland, which is women's sports and women's Gaelic games, to impact right across the board of Gaelic games and I think that's one of the most remarkable things and also to have access to the facilities to have access to the genius that is the GAA I mean this is I think this is a win-win for everybody Mary you just spoke there about integration happening quickly one of the things I look at last uh, Sunday you had the Leitrim women's team playing at two o'clock in Ballinamore you had the men's team playing an Allianz League game at two o'clock in Carrick on Shannon they're issues that have to be addressed very quickly, really, in a lot of ways. Yes, and that's one of the reasons we have we have a group now looking at fixtures. Actually, as somebody, I think it was Hilda made the remark today, that there's always been very good cooperation around fixtures, but there are there, there, there do become glue points, sticking points, because we don't have all the facilities, because we don't have all the financing, we don't have all the facilities that we need, so there's always sticking points. But by 2027, everybody will be a member of the GAA. Everybody will be entitled to parity of esteem. Everybody will be entitled to equality of opportunity and equality of access. So we're going to have to look again at all those and we're also going to have to ask government and local government and sponsors and private investors to help us to create the kind of facilities that don't have the sticking points. But the truth of the matter is we have a group now working on what I might call a, um, a fluent fixtures system to ensure that we don't get sticking points. Bearing in mind that facilities, finance and fixtures all go together. But when we're working together as one organisation, I think that will become much easier. Not to say there won't be arguments, um, but there'll be the arguments within one organisation instead of siloization of the issues, which makes makes life more difficult. There was obviously, that was raised in the press conference as well, there was never an ocean to kind of amalgamate the women's side of the stuff before it was all amalgamated into one organisation. Uh, you know what, no. If, if that's what I'd been asked to do, I'd have walked away. I'd have just simply walked away. I'd have said, no, 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 no. That's not what people are asking us to do. That's not. That's not what we're being asked to do. We're being asked to bring the GAA, and the, which serves three codes currently, and the Gillick, Ladies Gaelic Football and the Camogie Association into one organisation serving, serving all Gaelic games. And for me, that was, that's iconic. That's mega. That's the future. But no, don't ask me just to, just to take the two women's games. Some people have suggested that. That was never. No, I, I, I would have walked away from that. I wouldn't be interested in that. Mary, the finance question isn't going to go away. No, it's never going like, to go away. You, you've, have you had a look at the accounts? Have you engaged with government? How do you think this is going to work? engaged extensively with government, yes. And they have told us they will get behind us. They are um, hugely supportive of, of, obviously, of Gaelic Games in general, but in particular of developing them along um, gender-conscious lines to make sure that women sports, which is developing exponentially, now gets the, the momentum it needs, the structure it needs, the help that it needs. And I think this is what this new organisation will help serve. It'll help serve that purpose. Look, there's always going to be a need for more money. There's always going to be a need for more facilities. Look at how our country is growing. Look at the, 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 young, the, the cohort of young people we're developing. And the expectations 
are always getting higher and higher and higher. So yes, we have to keep at that. There, I don't think there'll ever be a day when we say we have enough, but there might be a day when we say we're getting close to that, and that's, that's what we're working towards. Mary, you're very, very passionate about this. That's obvious why you took the role. You're obviously going to want to stick, see this right the way through, right yeah. the way to completion. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the steering group and integration will be staying on. Uh, we are the hub, if you like, for all these working groups that are feeding back into us, and we will help um, support the process over the next few years until we get to 2027, and our, you know, and we'll have our big integration day, and we'll be just, you know, we'll be on the top of the world then. Mary, on a personal level for you, you've been involved in so many fantastic initiatives over the years. You've been president of this country, but getting this over the line, where would this rank for you on, on a personal level? I think this is probably for me as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. From childhood, I've been a GAA person. And I've always, and I played camogie very badly, but, uh, and my kids are all GAA heads, and still are, and my grandkids. Um, and, you know, I look at the future, and I look at the past, and I think of those three great organizations, and I can't think of anything that respects them more than to have them work together, but um, and not work together just as three independent organisations, but work together as one. I think that's what people expected of us, and that's why I'm so excited about this. That we are actually list we've listened, and they, the people asked us to do the job, and we've done the job. Now we still have work to do um, to get um, to get the 2027, but we have a pathway, and please goodness we. We'll, we'll have a great integration day on 2027. Can I just ask you two final quick ones? You mentioned inside that you went on a pilgrimage at the start 18 months ago. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, I went down to Carn um, in Clare and um, to Michael Cusick's home. Um, and I stood there looking at that poor little cottage. Um, there's a magnificent new centre there, of course, dedicated to him, which I recommend everybody who's a GAA head to visit because I didn't expect to be overwhelmed. And I stood there and I thought, he's born as he's a baby in Black, 80, Black 47, the worst year in Irish history for children, the worst year. Um, any child born in that year was either destined to die uh, very soon of um, poverty, of disease, of hunger, because it was the famine, um, or emigration. The very idea that a child born into poverty in the back end of County Clare would become a person so dedicated to sport, and, and he was very ecumenical. He loved all sport, cricket, rugby, he loved them all, and Gaelic games, but he would see the need to strengthen and bring focus to Gaelic games, and that this kid born then and, you know, at a time when nobody would have given a child a chance, never to mind somebody with that passion, um, I thought we need to do this for him. We need to do this for him because I know if Michael Cusick was here today and if he was starting again, he'd be doing what we're doing. He'd be doing what we're doing. He'd be starting one association for all Gaelic games. And I think that we respect his memory by doing this. Uh, we respect every volunteer who's ever worked uh, over the 140 years of the GAA and the 120 of Camogie and the 50 of Ladies Gaelic Football. We respect them in doing this because we're taking, you know, we're taking everything they have built, the strong three houses they've built, and over the top of it, we're building this amazing superstructure. Final question. There's a lot of work going on behind you here in Crow Park. The pre-building and excavation work has began in Casement this week. Yeah, obviously a very important time in the north at the minute. Things are moving quite quickly. Could we just get your opinion on how things are poised at the moment? I, um, I couldn't be more thrilled than I am to hear the news about Casement Park. Um, I spent many, many a weekend in Casement Park and I lived beside it for a number of years. And I have to say one of the saddest things for me over the last number of years has to be you know, driving up the Falls Road and seeing it empty and going nowhere. And now this news today is on the day that we're launching, you know, the, the plan for integration, I just see a synergy between those two things because, of course, that ground will be open to other sporting codes. There was a time when that would have been unthinkable, but it's not unthinkable now and it's healthy. 
and it's good and it's good for humanity and it's good for peace it's good for reconciliation it's the future you mentioned another a synergy is there another type of integration that could happen can we take one at a time? 